So I have already explained how the Ninja Turtles karate chopped their way onto the Super Nintendo, the Sega Mega Drive, and well, even into my heart, with some brutal 16-bit beat-em-up glory. What I didn't expect was a sneaky 32-bit title to come in and take a slice of that ninja cake. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 for the Game Boy Advance. A truly arcade experience crafted by Konami. And featuring control over all four of the turtles. These are pixel perfect cartoon renderings for the small screen. Yeah, yeah, okay, I know. It's just a dodgy port of the NES version. But Konami were doing some really cool things with the Ninja Turtles over the NES and the Super Nintendo periods. So, seriously, what happened to all the 32 bit Ninja Turtle games? I guess during that 32-bit era, the Sega Saturn, the PlayStation, no one was really holding out for the official, live-action Ninja Turtles Next Mutation video game. The show, it, it was flopping hard. It was a dark period for the Ninja Turtles. The kids who grew up with that first wave of cartoons weren't exactly kids anymore, and the fans of the comic books really weren't the audience here either. Thankfully, the 2003 cartoon rolled in and started to set the record straight across the board. Darker than the first cartoon, with some clear nods to the original comic book, as well as some of the fun-loving, pizza-eating personality that I loved from the original cartoons. And the idea of a new set of games started to gain traction again, and Konami were back, bringing the first Ninja Turtles game since Tournament Fighters to the next generation of systems. So, after nearly a decade, did we get a piping hot anchovy gourmet pizza that's still worth checking out today? Or just an empty soggy pizza box? The console game didn't exactly pan out. It's not exactly like 3D beat-em-ups were ever really going to set the world on fire. Konami already had a line of Turtles games for the original Nintendo Game Boy. So when they got the license to adapt the 2003 Ninja Turtles cartoon, they went ahead and did what they did best. Konami made an awesome side-scrolling platformer for the Game Boy Advance. So the 2003 cartoon nearly feels like the turtle version of a gritty reboot from the first cartoon. So compared to what I've experienced with the Sega Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo, this one feels so much more down to earth. Pretty much, for the most part, you go up against thugs, the Foot Clan and mouses. So my major concerns pretty much started setting in towards the end of the game. I had a real blast playing it, which is a major plus. But when you finish, you get a GameCube password for a game I don't actually have. But imagine getting a password when you're like on the bus or on the train. You'd be like, can't write this down anywhere. And even if I could, I probably won't. I could Google it faster on my phone. And the internet was a thing back in 2003 as well. I won't spoil the end too much either, but the story doesn't really wrap itself up. And I'm not really a fan of vague cliffhangers in video games. <laughs> I guess no one is really. It's supposed to be like an abridged version of the first season from the 2003 cartoon series. And that's kind of a cool idea if you're a fan of the show. But for anyone stopping in now, it doesn't really feel like a good payoff. And finally, it is a short game. And that's not always a bad thing with handhelds, but with no reason to come back, except to unlock GameCube passwords. It's not one of those games that I will leave in my Game Boy Advance to just grab and go. So there's a lot of reasons why Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the Game Boy Advance wasn't going to blow your mind. In a lot of ways, this feels like a pretty safe game, but I can't deny that while I was playing it, I did have a lot of fun. Konami brought back that classic Game Boy formula with a very action-focused, occasionally platforming side-scroller. 
It's a really solid game on a system that's got so many good games. It does get a little bit buried, but if you're a Turtles fan, it might be worth digging out. It does tie into the 2003 season, and there's some really cool monster designs, and it's probably one of my favourite Ninja Turtles games since the 16-bit era. Showing off some of those cool turtle gadgets, each of the scenarios had one stage dedicated to an alternative play mode. Some of them might be a bit clunky, but it does show off what that little handheld could do, and it does break up that simple side-scrolling with something a little bit different and interesting. In so many ways, Konami actually managed to bring a really beefed up side-scroller to the Game Boy Advance, where their console version just felt like a really repetitive button mashing 3D beat-em-up. The Game Boy Advance has a few things going for it. Where a poorly designed console game like Ninja Turtles could get boring and repetitive, I usually pick up a handheld title to play for 20 or 30 minutes. The stages were short, but each turtle had a different story, bosses and challenges. It wasn't going to compete with what they were doing on the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo with Turtles in Time and the Manhattan Project, but I get the feeling there was a bit more excitement around the franchise at that time in the early 90s. And hey, why not? Just to make it a little bit more confusing, Ubisoft picked up the license to adapt the 2007 CGI Ninja Turtles movie, calling their game TMNT. Released alongside the TMNT game for both home consoles and the PSP and DS, the Game Boy Advance's hardware just paled in comparison. And thank God. Taking a leaf out of Konami's book, we receive one of the best looking side-scrolling Turtles beat-em-ups. This is just not another game to add to the collection, but a seriously fun game that's worth playing. So visually, the 2007 CGI movie does feel a bit moodier and more gritty than the 2003 cartoon that Konami were adapting. It feels like the movie actually harkens back to those original live-action movies, that sort of dank, dirty atmosphere. TMNT really starts to reflect that mood. One thing you'll appreciate really quickly is how much they've fleshed out the fighting system, introducing weapons, combos, destructible environments and even enemies that you can interact with. You'll be fighting either a lot of thugs or a lot of foot soldiers, depending on the stage, but the action kept moving fast enough as you clear the enemies out of each section, you slowly progress through the game and face more dangerous variants of those enemies. So the fighting system is seriously a major highlight, which is good, it's a beat-em-up game. But they started taking the game in heaps of directions as well. After you finish that first stage, you get access to the Turtle Sewer Lair, where you can access the streets above, purchase upgrades and complete some of the mini-games. I'd love to have seen it fleshed out a bit more, but we're dealing with the Game Boy Advance. Just the fact that we got to see some awesome ideas coming into the Turtle games on such old hardware is really awesome. And as much as Ubisoft tried to recapture some of that Konami arcade charm with their Turtles games, I feel that this one just took it a step further. The biggest problem that I have with this game is that it had to be tied into the movie at all. It's just got such a unique personality and such a cool art style. I would have loved to see an original plot for it. If you're after classic Turtles plot and characters, this game just might not deliver. But if you're after classic beat-em-up gameplay with a bit of depth behind levelling up and exploration, this might be surprisingly fun. Outside that, there are a few other niggles. Considering this game has a level up and a partner system, where if you do pick the same two Turtles to team up with, their attacks get stronger together. You have to play solo as Raphael way too much. His stages are really cool, but it's short, so you don't get that much time playing with the other turtles to start leveling them up properly. And look, I guess finally, yeah, there is no multiplayer support. It's an advanced game, so I don't expect it, but if they could somehow work multiplayer into this game, it would have freaking blown my mind. I would have loved to see this game ported across to other platforms as well. The Ubisoft did release TMNT for other platforms like the Nintendo DS, the PSP and the PlayStation 2, but they were all the 3D games. This 2D game, I feel graphically, is held up a lot better. So yeah, this is pretty much what we got for the Ninja Turtles in 32 bits.
pretty much the last generation of 2D graphics that aren't trying to be retro inspired. Just the best graphics available for this system. The Game Boy Advance is a system that I've totally overlooked in the past. All the good games for it can be a little bit overwhelming, but I am really stoked I got the chance to check out the Ninja Turtles for it first. And if you're a fan of that classic Ninja Turtles gameplay, you might find a lot to love here, even though the games are really short. They are a hell of a lot better than their console counterparts, and they're really worth checking out if you haven't already. Anyway, thanks for tuning in.